Uh, this is the 2023 Beaver Coexistence Volunteer Training. Thank you for joining us today, of course. It's always good to have new volunteers on board. The first thing we're going to go over is uh, some Zoom basics. Uh, you can turn on your webcam and unmute yourself. Uh, usually during the uh, talking part of the presentation, uh, we'd like to have everyone mute, muted just so they uh, the, avoid as much shuffling and noise as possible while we're uh, doing the recording. Uh, but the end session with the Q&A, uh, you can either use the hand raising option or uh, put your questions in the chat while we're doing the presentation and then uh, we can address those at the end. So uh, there's some of the information when it comes to Zoom. The button should be available on your machine. So uh, the agenda that we're going to go with today, um, we're going to start with like a little introduction for myself, uh, and then we're going to cover uh, some reminders and go through the whole program, which is like the whys and the hows, uh, the goals of the position, uh, the equipment and the applications that we'll be using, as well as uh, how the shifts will actually work and how the volunteering will be run. Uh, we'll cover some safety details towards the end uh, and then cover maintenance shifts and how those are going to look. So there's a picture of me. It's Dylan. Uh, I'm the project coordinator for the Friends of Fish Creek when it comes to the public forest stuff. And I'm also doing some of the beaver stuff this year uh with uh rose and will as lead volunteers uh so you'll definitely see us around especially at those maintenance shifts so the first things first is a, a little reminder for the video uh if you haven't seen it yet uh making sure to watch the general volunteer training video is important uh it's up on our youtube channel all right so why are we doing it and what is the beaver coexistence project so beaver coexistence has always been kind of a uh, an issue that's been known about in the park. So they are a good problem to have, uh, but uh, the community also needs the park to be safe from falling trees and low maintenance. So sometimes uh, the pathway can flood, making it impassable, and uh, beavers can chew trees near pathway, which can uh, have them topple over, which is bad for access, especially for uh, wheelchair users. So our idea with the coexistence monitoring is just to uh, take track of where the beavers are now and uh, notice where they're moving so we can uh, make those uh, changes with maintenance in terms of wrapping trees and uh, installing pond levelers. So this is especially important in areas such as Marshall Springs, uh, which I can show you later. That's where a lot of our uh, pond, level pond levelers are. You'll see there that a lot of the city's storm ponds drain into that area. And so um, by having us control the water level a bit with the pond levelers, we're able to better control flooding on the pathway. So the goals for us this year with the coexistence project, um, first one is going to be updating the beaver dam information from last year following the rainy months. Uh, typically, uh, after the May and June, uh, wet weather. Uh, we have a lot of uh, melt coming down from the watershed that tends to um, rupture dams and blow them out. Uh, the beavers are very active too after the winter. Uh, so uh, finding out where they're moving to and uh, what they're doing is a key part of making sure that uh, we're doing our maintenance in the park. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is try to increase our presence in the park with frequency of inspection. Uh, so just going down and checking more often to uh, address the beaver issue whenever it pops up. And then, of course, we'll be increasing the amount of maintenance as well. Uh, just comes with having more people in the, in the program. So uh, watch out for those maintenance shifts. Uh, they'll be popping up as the work comes up. So how are we going to do this? Uh, well, that's easy. Uh, we're going to have lots of use with digital apps. Uh, ArcGIS Field Maps is going to be our main uh, app we're going to be using for this. I'll be giving you a little demonstration in a second here. Uh, you will be giving some tools for the job. Uh, the first aid kit is the most important part of that kit that we give you. Um, you'll need your cell phone too. Uh, unfortunately, we don't provide cell phones, but... <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it's quite easy to use your personal device for this uh, particular program. 
you're also going to have a lot of teammates. And I'll explain that as well. Uh, but you'll basically be assigned a portion of a grid on the creek and then be able to report on that section. All right. So now I'll show you uh, what we've got as far as uh, our GIS stuff. So basically, this is what uh, the app looks like on your phone. It's just on a desktop computer. So you can kind of see that's pretty much what it would look like on your phone, right? So if you can see the screen here, uh, this area is more where we're going to be working. You can kind of see the little details, uh, uh, Beaver Control 4, Beaver Control 1, Beaver Control 2. Uh, and this is pretty much what the map looks like. Uh, now, there's a little button in the corner here uh, with a compass on it. If you click it, should take you right to where the dot is. So you can see here, I'm in the, uh, in the office building here in the park. And that's the area we call the Bow Valley Ranch. So if anybody refers to the Bow Valley Ranch area, this is kind of the spot. Um, so as you can see along the creek, there's lots of these um, uh, little points. Uh, a lot of the green ones are trees. And if you wanted to know uh, what what point was, uh, you can take a peek by going up to layers and it should show you here uh, what which one is. I think there's a legend too. Yeah, so if you click on the three dots in the corner, you can get some more options, including a legend, which should tell you what everything is. Yeah, the compass button takes you to where you currently are. Thanks, Will. All right, so uh, say if you wanted to make a report or something, where the uh, button actually takes you, uh, this little blue one down here, that's how you make a new point. So when you click on it, uh, it should bring up this cursor on your screen and give you an option on the, on the menu that comes up. So you can add, uh, any of these observations, so uh, dams, skater drag trails, lodges, anything of that case, you can then uh, select it, say you've got a dam, and you can place it down right on top of where the cursor says you are. You can move the cursor around too, so say if there was um, a dam here I wanted to add, I could update the point over there. You can also take photos or attach documents to it if you need to. And then you basically fill out the form here, including um, you know, tree size, if it's something that's been cut, or the condition of the trees. You can also put down the observer. So if you've got a if you've got your team name or the team putting it in, you can put your observation in here. And there's a section for notes. So you can also write something like, oh, this dam is like. Uh, new this season, or uh, it looks like it's got a hole in it or something, uh, any useful information can go in that field. Right. <laughs> if you don't want to make that, you can click on the X here to cancel your created dot, and that'll just go away. Yes, discard. There we go. Under the layers section, if you want to uh, not see a layer for whatever reason, or if you don't see a layer that you want to see, you can select or unselect it from here. So it's just the layers button up next to the search function. And then you can turn them on or off. So then you can make them disappear. Come back. Whatever the case you uh, need. So uh, you might have noticed this grid here. Uh, this is kind of how we're going to uh, make sure the teams work. So uh, on Saturday, basically, when you guys come in, uh, what we'll do uh, is we'll do a quick tour of the park as well as get you set up with your team on a few of these grid squares. 
Now we'll go into more details on that on Saturday. Uh, but really quickly, how we would do this is um, your team name would just go into the square. Uh, you'll be able to see it pop up as a different color from the other grid squares. And then you'll know exactly where to go in the park to take your observations. Um, you'll be able to uh, change the points here. Uh, so when you drop down an observation, we'll know that you uh, made that point and if maintenance needs to be done, uh, we can check that and uh, make a shift for it if need be, if it's a big enough item. Uh, another way we'll be filling out reports is the last five minutes field. And so we can do that too. Uh, it's just another way of recording information for our stats, basically. All right, so some of the tools uh, we're going to have with us are uh, the vests, uh, the first aid kits, uh, your cell phone, of course, and a backpack. Now, the backpacks can be made available upon request. I think a lot of people use their own for the RHA program last year. The only equipment outside of your phone is the first aid kit and a vest and the vest you can wear. So uh, it's just for the kid, basically. So here's the slide covering teammates. So as part of our policy with the Friends of Fish Creek, uh, independent volunteers that are going out without staff uh, require a teammate just for safety. Teams are gonna be assigned in person, like I mentioned a little earlier. And the monitoring is gonna be done by those grid squares that you can see. Again, same as you can see on the map. You can turn that layer on and off too if it's getting distracting. Uh, now, another thing to mention is that we're what I'm going to try this season is um, adding people who would like to a committee through my impact page. And so what that means is that if you allow me to add you to the committee, you'll be able to email the larger group without being able to see anybody's email addresses. And if somebody wants to reply, they can, um, and they would then be revealing their email address to you. So uh, I'm gonna make it opt-in only. So if you want to be included on the committee, uh, you can just uh, let me know. Um, we can try that feature out. And if it proves useful, uh, just keep using it. Hey, Dylan. So, yes? I, I don't wanna interrupt much, but... Um... We, we need to have two volunteers out on each outing, but do they both have to be trained beaver coexistence volunteers? For example, if a couple were, to, uh, there was a team of um, park watch volunteers and one of them was also trained as a beaver coexistence volunteer, then they could do the beaver type things as well, I think. Yeah, presumably if you had, uh, somebody, one person trained in the beaver coexistence project, and then another person in, say, Park Watch that doesn't have the training, uh, they could, of course, make reports. Um, in terms of uh, how that works for volunteering hours, uh, it might get a bit tricky, uh, but um, the observations are always handy to have, uh, regardless of where the hours go for um, reporting statistics. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're already out in the field volunteering, you can always make uh, observations. Does that cover your uh, question, Rose, or your comment, I guess? Yeah, that was just uh, clarity because sometimes sometimes you have mixed people and, you know, like anybody can make these observations. When it comes to doing the actual maintenance, we need them to be beaver volunteers. But a person who's not a beaver volunteer could be super, could be there with you to ensure your safety. For sure. All right. So, uh, yep. And the last part is that uh, teams that finish the most five last five minute reports get bragging rights. So I would just mention it at the uh, volunteer appreciation dinner at the end of the year, basically. So uh, how your shifts are going to work. Uh, you'll be preparing for your shift. Uh, that means taking a charged phone, uh, water, clothing for the weather, uh, and anything else you might need, snacks, uh, equipment, shift mates, uh, stuff that you might just uh, find handy. If you find that um, uh, gloves are a nice thing to have, uh, bring them along. Uh, stuff to leave at home includes valuables, uh, pets. If you're going to go off trail a lot, 
um, mostly for um, just uh, the wild animals uh, that live in the park. Uh, electronics, we'd ask that you leave at home. And then anything fragile as well, uh, glass water bottles or uh, other containers of that type, just so you don't break them. So the mobile time clock is how we track um, hours for volunteering, uh, as well as knowing who is in the field in advance of emergency. Uh, so if you're logged into the mobile time clock, it tracks your time for you, which is great. But say there's, uh, we hear of a wild animal in the area, we can alert whoever's in the field and uh, make them aware of the situation. So the first and last five minutes forms are a fantastic way for us to record data. Uh, the first five minutes form is more of a safety deal. Uh, it's a checklist that allows you to go through all of the safety points. Uh, so, you know, uneven terrain, uh, tool use, if the case may be, as well as just making sure that uh, everyone's aware of the uh, other hazards, uh, such as water or um, trail users, say that's a big one. Uh, the last five minutes form is mostly for recording statistics. So uh, it should have stuff in it like, um, you know, when you went out, how long you were out, um, kind of where you went during that time, as well as how many observations you made and uh, any sort of other measurable uh, piece of information, basically. So when it comes to other bits of safety here, or basically uh, if conditions change during the outing, uh, then, you know, make yourself safe according to those conditions. Like if you come across a path that's flooded and you were planning to go down there, uh, don't do it unless you were prepared for that. So like you already had like all the safety equipment. So like, you know, water boots or waders or whatever the case may be. Uh, and if it starts to rain, uh, maybe turn back and go another day if you're not prepared for that weather. Uh, basically making sure that you're as safe as possible at all times when volunteering for us. Uh, it's very important. So in the volunteer handbook, uh, we also have uh, articles for the safety items. Uh, so there's kind of two categories. There's more general ones for all of the programs we do, as well as more specific ones for the Beaver Coexistence Project. Uh, so uh, make sure you're familiar with them before you start volunteering and um, remind uh, others as well as these safety items as they come up. Uh, you know, safety is everyone's responsibility and I uh, really appreciate it when people uh, stay as safe as possible. So uh, for first aid, um, just remember that uh, the kits are there to be used. Uh, so if you need to use it, um, you can go ahead and use it basically. Uh, just remember that our incident reports do have to be filled out within 48 hours uh, if you do open that kit. And we also need to keep them stocked at all times. So if the kit is being used, uh, then just bring it in. Band-Aids, there's a few Band-Aids outside the kit as well, uh, just in case somebody gets a cut or a scrape. Um, but of course, if that injury is going to use a bunch of Band-Aids, uh, it's probably best just to open the kit. Uh, there's more details, of course, too, in the general volunteering video. Uh, here as well is our field question resolution map. Uh, so it's been revised since last year. There's not been too many changes. Uh, the big one on here is the 310 land. It will get you in contact with like um, all the other services for the parks, basically. Uh, so they will connect you to the right service if you don't uh, know which one to call right away. This um, map for numbers is really good because it gets you to the right people uh, as quickly as possible. But if you're ever unsure, calling 310 land is a good bet because they can connect you to the right spot. And um, always in emergencies, 911, <laughs> that would be the first number to call. So the police checks, uh, these are done anytime we have independent volunteers, uh, just as a uh, precaution against like, uh, equipment, uh, as well as if anytime there's access to buildings, if you ever needed access to like um, the cookhouse building, uh, we could give you the code and you could then use that uh, entrance. Uh, it's good as well for the equipment storage. 
uh, it's just a bit of um, insurance on our end, basically. Uh, like we didn't want to make it too much of a, a barrier, of course, like uh, if it's tricky to get it uh, in the short term, uh, that's kind of understandable. And that's, um, you know, uh, eventually the goal would be to have it, but uh, it, it's stopping you from volunteering for months and months. That's not exactly ideal either. Uh, so uh, this is a really good thing to have because uh, it covers you for a bunch of other programs as well. And you only have to do it once. So it's a good uh, option uh, if you're going to be volunteering with us a long time just because, um, you know, once it's done, it's done. Right, and so the maintenance shifts. Uh, so these uh, come up more as needed, uh, basically. A lot of the maintenance work involves uh, undigging uh, a little bit of a dam uh, just to let some water flow through or clearing out the uh, pond leveler pipes and just so they're working properly. Uh, these can be a lot dirtier, but they are very fun. <laughs> so it's, it's very unsatisfying to unclog a pipe or a dam. Uh, we also build the pond levelers during the summer. Uh, so those are a good time as well. Um, since there are staff on hand for some of these, uh, I would consider uh, inviting a friend and they could even uh, do a little bit of volunteering with you as long as they sign the forms, uh, just because it's more of a safety thing and less of a training thing that they would have to be involved in. That's more the how the maintenance will work. Uh, and it'll be, it'll pop up as we need it. Uh, it's not really like an all the time kind of thing uh, where it has like a consistent schedule. Uh, you shouldn't feel compelled to uh, participate in the maintenance shifts either. Uh, like say, like if you um, uh, can't participate in this kind of work for whatever reason, um, you don't have to. Uh, if monitoring is as much as you can do, that's perfectly fine. So, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, but it is it is a lot of fun, so I would definitely encourage it if you can. So now some friendly reminders for you folks. Uh, remember to read those sections of the volunteering handbook. Uh, the volunteer agreement as well is a good thing to read. Uh, the SWPs in the handbook are the part that I would want you to review if you read it. Uh, remembering the first and last five minutes of each and every shift is really good. Um, the last five minutes is kind of the way that we tell that you've uh, done the work and how we report it to uh, the people that give us money. So uh, it's it's an important part of uh, the volunteering work that we do. Uh, it just ensures that we can keep doing it in the future as well. Uh, using the time clock to log hours is important. Uh, just remembering to turn it off when you're done. Always good practice. Making sure another safety point uh, to only um, participate within your comfort zone. Uh, so if something is like, seems wildly dangerous to you, uh, maybe don't do that thing. <laughs> like the last thing we would want to do is, uh, for anyone to get hurt. Of course, if someone does get hurt, uh, remembering to report it as soon as possible to us is important, uh, just so we can, um, address the situation and find a way for that not to happen again in the future basically. All right, so uh, just throughout the season, we'll be uh, kind of sending out regular uh, summaries or updates. Uh, so if anything big comes up uh, regarding the program, uh, anyone that finishes training would uh, potentially just know about it. Uh, we could email them if it was uh, information that was important. Uh, but you can contact us anytime you like. Uh, you can always give me a phone call or text at the number uh, at the bottom of my emails. Uh, the better impact emails uh, may not always work for replies. So you can use the work email that I've included on those as well. And that always gets to the inbox. So uh, there's also an end of year volunteer experience survey. Uh, filling that out gives us really good insights into uh, how the programs are running and working. Uh, so those are always appreciated if you fill those out. Um, I read a bunch last year and made some changes based on them. So they're definitely valuable to us. And uh, I we hope valuable to volunteers in the future too. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's just an important part of making the organization a better place to work.
And so, yeah, here's some contact information. If you do either need, um, if you have questions about the program, you can always give me a call or text me. Uh, please only during work hours. <laughs> um, of course, uh, email always works too. Um, I try to reply the next day. Uh, sometimes I get a little busy, but, um, you know, um, I will try and get back to you. All right. And that's uh, pretty much the, the presentation there. Um, there's some photography credits. And uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions now, uh, if you, uh, you can either put them in chat for me to address or uh, if you'd like to uh, speak, you can. Uh, and if anyone's interested in going back over the ArcGIS stuff, uh, we can do that for a little bit too. Yes, Will here. I can just uh, a couple of things just as we're you know, as we're starting to organize it and you know, organize the shifts. I mean, you and I were talking today about you know how how sort of assigning grids on the on the monitoring. I mean, one of the really key things about that is that it means you know, people will be able to know that basically they're going to be monitoring an area where there is interesting activity. And mm -hmm. but on the maintenance side as well, you know, everybody's got different schedules and. You know, last year it, it worked pretty well in terms of being flexible so that you know, the people that really wanted to have the chance to get out and do the maintenance because you know grubbing in the mud is pretty fun you know we're really happy to be flexible so that people have opportunities so it's you know it's, it's not a I mean sometimes there's things that need dealing with right away if a path is flooding but when we're organizing things you know we're pretty decent at accommodating that's true yeah um you know, it's, um, you know, work to whatever your comfort level is. So, um, yeah. you know, if, if you want to do more, you can totally do more, whichever stop you from, uh, stop anyone from working. So, so for, if anybody needs to use transit, I was looking up transit routes the other day and, uh, Bebo Grove is well accessed by, um, Max Yellow, which drops you off at uh, 24th street, ab just above Bebo Grove yeah. itself. So right at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. So Bebo Grove is accessed from 24th Street off from the north side, for those who aren't familiar with it. And yeah, we'll take a wander down through all of our um, coexistence devices. And we've got a uh, beaver dam that needs mucking about on is because the beavers keep working to uh, flood the trail down there. This is true, yeah. Yeah, we've. Um, I was talking to Will today, and he was like, "Yep, it's a, like a perfect example site. <laughs> it's it's a perfect example of beaver activities." Yeah, and we should be, you know, seeing lots of sign of of very, very well, just current activity, and uh, you know, and then if we're taking a look in Marshall Springs, there's, you know, there's sort of various flooding going on because the city drainage is still frozen. So yeah, it should, it should be really, we'll be able to see everything that we could come across. Mm -hmm. Maybe not beavers, we'll see. For sure. I see Rob's asking, will we be carrying out any maintenance? Um, yeah, we're probably gonna have to grub out that one break in the dam that we've made. We've breached a dam just below the Bebo Grove uh, um, storm ponds and the beavers keep, uh, I don't know if this will, I don't know if this will show, but the, the beavers keep throwing new sticks in. Okay. So we've, we've just been going, um, Will and I have just been going every three or four days and pulling out a few uh, logs and trying to keep the water off of the pathway down there. So uh, Rob and his dog don't have to swim every day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, um, definitely waterproof shoes tomorrow or on Saturday. And something with good grips because we will be on mud. Yeah, not deep mud, but. Slippery spots. Slippery spots, yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing particularly onerous, and uh, like I said, we may bring like a little rake or something for just just reaching things. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's going to be pretty simple. Yeah, and again, like if anyone uh, doesn't want to go off trail, they don't have to. Uh, we're just going to probably fix a couple things while we're already down there, you know. Actually, we're saying we'll bring some of the other tools as well, just to be able to show them. Rose, yeah, we have a Pulaski, sure. and Rose wants to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, 
Uh, any other questions from anybody about uh, any of the volunteering stuff? Oh, it should be really fun on Saturday. It's that's every there's just so much going on there. It's really really kind of neat right now. Yeah, I think so. It's it's going to be a good time for sure. Yeah, <laughs> a good time in a weird way. <laughs> well, it's never boring. So. No. Sounds great. All right, perfect. Yeah, well, if there's no more questions from anybody. Um, and, and we can go through, um, when we're down there in the field, we can go through and practice doing a couple observations. Oh, absolutely. Um, D Dylan's pretty good. He'd probably go on the back si backside and delete our uh, fake ones, or we can just do multiple observations of the same thing. And yep. and, and that, that, way, that way we've all got a feel for how that works. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, of course, we'll... Uh, I can definitely delete stuff on the back end, so uh, there's no worries there. We'll be able to uh, mess around pretty much as much as we like. So, so it'll be good practice. Awesome, great, perfect. Okay, well, I guess I'll uh, see everyone Saturday, and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your night. <laughs>